Mediterranean Marinas is about where you can keep your boat in the sun for the summer and still enjoy flying south in winter time in order to visit your boat and be able to expect reasonably warm weather. The new problem for Brit boat owners, of course, is Brexit and the Schengen. To be clear, the European Union will only allow us to be in Europe for three months in any six-month period. Now, assuming we want to spend the summer sailing in the Mediterranean waters, say all June, July and August, we must not then be in any European country for the next three months. But that does mean that we can fly down to our boat again for Christmas or the New Year, or even spend the worst of the winter down there for a total of three months, 90 days, in the second 180 days of a year. And of course, you can always sail across to Morocco and spend as much time as you like there and preserve your precious 90 days, Smyr or Tangier. And there are also a load of small Moroccan ports from MD to the frontier with Algeria that I've visited. Um, and they are interesting, but I'm not sure I'd want to spend more than a couple of days there. Um, they don't really have any facilities at all for cruising boats and are at the best primitive and sometimes facilities are totally non-existent. But they're fun to visit once. This chart with the line of latitude on it shows the southern coast of Spain, the Costa del Sol, and that is pretty warm and okay in winter time. Um, I'm sitting here at the start of December and it is, frankly, it's too hot with uh, a shirt and a t-shirt. Be clear though, winter can be wet with gales and occasionally at noon the temperature will drop below 18 degrees, which is the average winter temperature. I frequently see people sunbathing on Christmas Day. The sea is warm enough for swimming all year round. So where can you keep your boat safely on the Costa del Sol? Part one of these series looked uh, from Morocco to Jib to Estepona. This one covers Puerto Benus to Ben Almadna, sublime to the uh, less sublime. You can fly into either Gibraltar or Malta to get a taxi to any of these places and it's going to cost around 60 euros, except Ben Almadna when it'll be around 35 euros because it's so close to Malaga Airport. Firstly, Puerto Bernus is a luxury, wealthy resort and the home of super yachts with paid crew, high-end shops, restaurants, bars, all around the marina. The annual price for a 12-metre sailing boat is around 7,700 euros a year, at least 50% more than any other marina on the Costa del Sol, excepting Marbella. But make no mistake about it, if you have the wallet for this marina, it is absolutely first rate. And if you like high end eating, drinking and shopping, uh, it's perfect. The services offered by the Capitania are superb and the place is very, very secure. Guards, vigilantes are around everywhere. There's a lovely beachside walk to Marbella, um, past the homes of the rich and famous. Naturally, Everything is first rate and it's high end sailing and boating. And if you're into that and you have the wallet for it, then Puerto Benus is the jewel in the crown of Spanish marinas. Kings, princes and film stars keep their boats here. I walk there frequently from here in Marbella along the beach path past these luxurious homes. And I always enjoy the visit and I'm amused that uh, the least expensive quayside bar in Puerto Bernus, a coffee, a cafe, costs double what it does in my favourite beach bar in Marbella. Personally, I'm not comfortable with all that glitz because I'm not rich and famous, and if I were, well, um, it would certainly be a good place to keep the boat. You can fly into Malaga Airport and get off at the rank, and it's going to cost you around 70 euros, and it's probably about the same from Gibraltar. Next along the coastline is Marbella, where I am now with its two marinas. Both are very much for local boats. The first one is a proper marina and has reasonable facilities and is in the middle of town. You can walk up into the old town in a few minutes with its romantic restaurants and good quality shops. The marina itself is fine, none of the glitz of Puerto Bonus, 
and frankly not the security of Puerto Banus. There's a fast motorboat that runs hourly or so from Marbella Marina to Puerto Banus if you do want an injection of glitz. This marina really is intended for local people who will frequently go down to play with their boats and look after them themselves. I'm not absolutely certain I would want to leave my boat here unattended for long, long periods. Just a mile or so further along on the edge of Marbella is a fishing port and it too has spaces for private boats, yachts, whatever. And it's probably a better bet if you want Marbella to be your home port. It's surrounded by uh, terrific eat-on-the-street fish restaurants and I always enjoy an inexpensive and pretty good seafood meal down there. Because it's commercial with for fishing boats large and small there are places for yachts there and in many ways it's preferable to the marina. It has better locking gates and so on. It is on the edge of town, but my feeling is um, security is infinitely better with fewer tourists walking around unchecked. But equally, there are better places to keep your boat full time further along the coast, I think. This place is really more a fishing harbour than a full on marina. Both Marbella marinas are priced slightly less than Puerto Banus, and they're probably going to cost you around 7,000 euros a year for a 12 metre boat. Taxi to um, Marbella from Malaga Airport is about 65 euros. The next marina along the coast is Capopina, which is very much a small marina mainly for local motorboats. I'm not sure what the depths are, but it is again very much a place for local people to keep their boats. And although it has its attractions, I'm not certain I'd want to leave my boat there unattended for months at a time. I, I, I could be wrong and the Capitanery could be excellent, but I just think there are bigger, better places uh, further along. Next up, and certainly a bigger, better place, is Fuengarola, or Funky Roller as the local Brits call it. A really nice marina and a place I always enjoy visiting in my boat. There are two downsides to it. Firstly, the fishing boats tend to leave port just before sunrise at full speed in the middle of the marina, making waves that rock and roll the boats and give you a for certain wake up call. The second downside is that in the summer, the disco rocks and rolls into the early hours of the morning every single night of the week. Apart from these two issues, it's an excellent marina with all the facilities you could want. When I had a 12 meter boat there, there were sometimes issues with finding me a berth when I was visiting, but they do have berths for up to 20 meters apparently. Fuengarola has a travel lift and all the facilities to haul out for the winter. This is probably, realistically, the first reasonably priced marina after Estepona, um, which I covered in the previous MED video. They will sell you in Fuengarola a 12 meter berth for around 25,000 euros. It is of course a full on holiday resort for Brits and Germans, so it's really buzzy all summer. I like the place a lot as it's surrounded by reasonably priced bars and restaurants and it's only a short walk into town. The marina office is pretty laid back, getting them to answer the telephone or VHF9 is to say the least challenging but I normally just type at the visitor's pontoon and walk into the office. It's probably a 40 euro taxi ride from Malaga Airport and I would certainly consider keeping my boat here on an annual basis and feel confident it would be safe. Benel Madina, Benel Medina is six miles further along the coast from Fuengarola and by comparison is huge. It has around a thousand berths for yachts and motorboats. The marina is really built in two parts. There's the outer area that is a full on normal marina with all the facilities you could want. Then the inner part is a sort of town marina, parking for boats surrounded by shops, cafes, bars and the tourist trade, um, all for the tourist trade on sort of little lakes and um, tiny coves specially constructed around the shops and bars and restaurants. There's an excellent area near the boatyard which has a travel lift 
Um, and this area has got several motorboat engine companies, shipwrights, chandlers, and boat sales. It has everything for maintaining your boat except for sailmakers. There is a distinct lack of sailmakers on the Costa del Sol for some reason. If you sail into Benal Madina as a visitor, avoid being put on the quay facing the marina entrance as there could be a considerable swell coming in from easterly winds and it almost become un becomes untenable. One night I was there, a big swell came in and I had six mooring lines break during the night. The, the lines that go from the stern to the quayside, two on each end of the boat and each one of those lines broke three times. The marina, the marina office wants to allocate you these berths because no locals will accept them. On the shore side of the marina complex, um, you have to live with full-on tourism, but there are nice, reasonably priced restaurants and bars around the boatyard area that are less pushy. The rest of the area is dedicated to stripping tourists of as much money as they possibly can. And to be fair, it's a place that tourists travel to, to see, to say they've been there. They've been to Benel Madina Marina. Benel Madina is a full-on tourist town with a village up on the hill, uh, which I suspect was the original town before beach holidays became everything. It's virtually next door to Malaga Airport, so I guess a taxi ride would be around 30 euros, depending on how many passengers and luggage you have. I did once leave my boat in Benel Madden of Marina for a winter, and uh, whilst I went to, back to the UK, and I never had any concerns at all. If you can live with the outrageous tourism of the place, it's a very good contender for the place to keep your boat in. Lastly in this video is Malaga. Now clearly attractive as a permanent place for the boat as it's a superb city with its own airport, but it's just not really geared for small boats. Malaga is a major industrial port and cruise liner terminal. There is a yacht club within the port which has 83 berths, so the chances of joining that and getting a berth are pretty minimal. There is another yacht club just outside the town with 280 berths, but there too I'd be surprised if you could find a place. Be aware, Spanish yacht clubs are very different from UK yacht clubs. Spanish yacht clubs are about social status rather than boat owning. Most have swimming pools, golf and tennis and superb restaurants. And to be fair, they are very much family orientated. There is always a very smart dress code and whilst the surroundings and facilities are magnificent, you do have to pay for them. The entry fee, the joining fee to one of these clubs, is frequently around two to three thousand euros. And then the annual subscription of maybe 1,500, 2,000 euros or so per person. If you actually own a boat, and I strongly suspect that the high proportion of members do not, then the mooring fees will indeed be slightly less than a commercial marina. If you sail into most Spanish yacht club marinas, you'll find the parking fee is very high. A high standard of dress code is required if you want to use the club bar or the restaurant. And they probably will not speak or at least choose to speak to you in English. Of course, there are exceptions and a few are welcoming, but all are for wealthy local business people. Frankly, I really doubt Spanish yacht clubs are going to be attractive to the average Brit with a boat. In my next video, I'll look at marinas from Malaga to Almirimar, which is a wonderful place to keep a boat and probably the least expensive in all of Spain. One of my books is called Cruising Southern Spain and the Costa del Sol and has more details about the marinas and so on. It's available from gentlesailing.com along with my other books. If you feel like subscribing to my channel, well, then I'd be grateful as it helps with YouTube promoting it. But if you don't, it really doesn't matter. Um, I, don't, I don't mind at all. I'm grateful to you watching, if you've watched so far. Um, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video, if you are interested. Bye. 
So far, French Canal Route to the Mediterranean has sold over 2,700 copies. And the, the gentle sailing route to the Mediterranean, that's down the outside coast, has also sold over 1,850 copies so far. If you want a copy of any of my sailing books, then they're available as instant downloads from gentlesailing.com, all one word. Or if you want my articles and descriptions about sailing, uh, you'll find them at michaelbrandt.com.